Hello everybody, welcome back to the Willy Nilly Applique series. Today we're doing some fall themed applique called Flower Harvest. You'll see the little thumbnail up in the corner. That's what we're doing today. Y'all, you could sew this applique onto all kinds of stuff. Last week I took Bells and Holly and applique it to a t-shirt. If you missed that, there's a link to the playlist of all these appliques grouped together down in the description box. You can go back and watch it. I did wash my shirt only one time, <laughs> but it uh, it held up wonderfully and I'm super uh, happy with it. It did wrinkle just ever so slightly. I kind of expected that because nothing was pre-washed, but yes, now I have a really festive t-shirt to wear uh, when Christmas rolls around, right? So yeah, you can put this applique on all kinds of stuff. And that's what we're doing today. You can get the PDF down in the description box. It is free until October the 20th. You also see a link for the cutting files that are already over on Etsy. If you have a cutting machine, that really speeds up the process. And uh, as of October the 20th, I will take the PDF and the cutting files and merge them together over in Etsy. Okay, so grab the PDF while it's free. It has a placement guide and all of your applique templates. So usually uh, I show you an example of what a quilt would look like if you took this applique and repeated it several times to make a quilt. Well, today I'm switching it up and I'm gonna show you what a table runner would look like if you made four blocks using this applique. Isn't that nice? Wouldn't that be a nice little festive table runner or maybe put this on a hutch where you plan on serving some desserts or something like that for Thanksgiving. Very pretty. Just some small little sashing in between your blocks and a nice little border with some cornerstones. I love that, don't you? So there's an idea for this applique if, uh, if you're looking for ideas. And next week we're going to come together on Friday the 20th. And we're going to go back into Christmas with a block or an applique that I've called Joy. So this is what we're doing next Friday. If you haven't yet subscribed, you might want to do that. Click the bell notification and make sure you click all so you get notified when I upload the thumbnail and you can be reminded to get the applique while it's free, right? So that's what we're doing next Friday. So let's just dive right in. So Today, I'm going to make my applique into a uh, a little mini quilt that I plan to hang up, right? I don't think I plan on making a fall quilt or a table runner right as of now. So I'm going to make this into just a little mini quilt. Well, who loves finishing projects with binding? I do, kind of. I love the look of a binding finished edge. It kind of frames your project, right? But who loves doing the binding? Not really, not so much me. And if you have a trouble with connecting the ends on your binding and all of that stuff that goes along with binding, I have an alternative way for you to finish a little project like this using scraps of binding that you have left over. So stay tuned for that. Towards the end, I'm gonna show you how to face this little small project. And uh, yeah, just a quick way to finish your small projects, okay? All right, let's come on over to the pressing board. You'll see I have my little um, fabric here. This applique is formatted to fit a 12 inch finished quilt block. So that's what I've done. I've taken my 12 and a half inch ruler. Uh, I took some tea stained muslin, starched it, pressed it, and used my 12 and a half inch ruler just to mark off uh, a square so that I can center my applique right in there. <clears throat> I have all of my pieces cut for today and I used my scan and cut and I'm using flannel today. Flannel, it's nice and warm and cozy, right? And uh, I've picked out some really pretty colors. Let's just take a look. With the PDF, there's two pages of tracing templates. They have been mirror image. That's a lot of pieces, isn't it? I think there's like 21 pieces for this applique. The cool thing is, is you could make a quilt block with just this flower. Do all kinds of variations with this uh, template, right? 
So there's all of our pieces. And I have already uh, cut out and taped together the placement guide. So that's what the placement guide looks like once you have it all prepared and ready to go. Now you'll notice, looking at the flowers, that you have the base main flower and then the three pieces centered on top of it. So I'm so not so much going to use my silicone mat today. And another reason for that is uh, all of these little stems are quite thin. I did use my scan and cut to cut them out, but look how thin they are. <laughs> and even the smallest ones, that is super duper thin. So um, while I'm not going to use my silicone mat to fuse those little stems in place underneath of the large flower, I'm still going to use this placement guide underneath of this fabric, and I'm just going to mark where the big parts go and where my leaves are going to go. Okay, so let me just walk you through that. This particular fabric, you can see through it, so that makes it really helpful, right? If you were using a darker fabric, maybe bringing in a light pad or holding this up to a window would be really helpful. But you can kind of center the whole motif right in that block. And then I'm just going to use a heat erasing pen. And I'm going to mark just some guidelines of where things are going to go. Right? And I don't have to trace the entire piece. Just some placements. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have just some reference marks so that I can center my pieces on there. And let's just remove that for a little bit. And now I can just start placing all of these pieces. I have my big flower and it's gonna come right there. The middle sized flower and the smallest flower. And then we can just center these pieces right over top. Like so. <laughs> and the circles go right in the middle. You'll pardon me. I have a little bit of a stuffy nose today. <laughs> the seasons are changing. It makes my allergies go cuckoo. All right. And then the leaves. And then the smaller leaves. I really like how I cut the bigger ones with a darker green and the smaller ones with a lighter green. I think it just adds a little something extra to it, right? So there we go. All I have left is the stems. And I think instead of using the stems cut out of fabric, I think maybe I'll do like a uh, satin stitch or something for a stem that doesn't involve sewing down those tiny little stems. So now that I have the placement right in my block, I'm gonna go ahead and fuse everything. And I have to heat up my iron to do that. So let's just give that a second. What you see right here is a thin piece of warm and natural batting. I'm gonna use that in the middle of my quilt. And um, I have some back fabric off to the side. And once everything is fused into place, I'm going to go ahead and layer everything. I have the free motion foot on my sewing machine. So I'm going to do a little bit of free motion stitching with you today. And that should be fun. All right, I heard a click. That means we can press.
flannel is quite thicker uh, than just regular quilting cotton, right? So sometimes I find it helpful to use a little bit of steam just to go through all those layers. And then I'm just going to check the edges of my pieces before I move anything. See, that one's still a little loose. Yeah, this weekend it was quite chilly, which was lovely. <laughs> I like uh, like mid 60s, low 70s. That's my favorite kind of weather. Did any of you try to do the applique on the t-shirt yet? All right, we're gonna let that cool off. I think that's pretty good and fused. So let me bring in my back fabric while the top is cooling off. And I'm gonna just lay that right down here on my pressing board. And then I'm gonna bring in my batting and just center that right on top. And I'm going to go ahead and add some glue and glue base these layers while that top is uh, cooling off. So just little bits of glue here and there. Just enough to hold that batting in place. Like that. Let's bring this top in. You'll notice I have not cut the top exactly 12 and a half by 12 and a half yet, right? Uh, once everything is stitched and quilted, I will trim it up just like if you were doing a quilt, right? We have a little bit of extra on there. With the batting and the back fabric. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and dry this glue and we'll speed that part up because it might take a second. Okay, we're back here and we have to let this cool off again because what I plan to do, let's see, the block goes like that really. What I plan to do is just use my heat erasing pen and draw in the little stems so I don't forget them. But if I use my heat erasing pen while this is still warm, it's just going to disappear. <laughs> You'll notice I still have some dark purple showing through. That's where the globs of paint, uh, globs of glue were really thick. And I do think that maybe that will disappear as those thicker parts dry. Everything else is pretty much dry. And uh, I can probably go ahead and start stitching. But we're going to let this cool off just a minute so I can put those stems in there. So yeah, I have some brown thread in both the top and in my bobbin. Today I'm using YLI thread. And I thought what I would like to do with this block is to do a free motion stitch close to the edge around all of my flower bits and the leaves. And then switch over to a thread that kind of matches my tea stain muslin and I think I'm going to do a meandering stitch in the background today with you. We'll see how it goes. And then once that's all done, I am going to switch back over to the brown thread and do a zigzag stitch for my stems. I think that's what we're going to do. 
So there's a stem and there's a stem. And you'll see I'm just eyeballing these. <laughs> if you want to use a placement guide for this, you could certainly do that. There we go. Isn't that going to be pretty? Okay, so let's come on over to the sewing machine. I have everything already set up. Uh, let's come on over here. Okay, dokie. We're ready to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to start by um, just grabbing this top thread. I have my machine set on a straight stitch. I'm going to lower my stitch length to a zero. And you could lower the feed dogs if you want to. I'm not going to on my machine. And we're going to just bring up that top thread. Or excuse me, the bobbin thread. <laughs> just like that. And lower that needle. And here we go. And what I did want to do is grab my knee lift. I'll be right back. No, I cannot grab the knee lift. <laughs> the sewing machine is too far away. There's not enough space there. So we're going to have to deal with my hand, but that's okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to speed this part up. Y'all have seen me do free motion stitching quite a bit, but I always think it's fascinating to watch the whole process. So let's get started. So there's the first flower stitch down. The awesome part about stitching down my applique with the layers of my project is I'm not only stitching down my applique, I'm also quilting my project at the same time. So see that little definition right there? You can feel where the stitches push down all of those layers, where that stitch line is, and it's going to be nice and quilted when I'm all done. So I'm just going to skip from one place to the next. I am doing small little stitches when I get started and when I end, you might not be able to see it, uh, but that's locking my thread before I jump and start on the next part. Okay.
So here we are. All of my applique pieces have been stitched down. Now I have uh, quite a few little jump stitches I need to trim away. And so I'm going to do that and then change out my thread color to a thread that matches my background. And we'll be right back. Okay, I've taken all the jump stitches from the top and the bottom. Uh, I don't usually, because usually <laughs> we're live, right? Uh, but because of internet issues, I'm, I've been recording my videos. So usually I don't take the time to quilt the backgrounds because it could be a little bit time consuming. But because I'm recording this, I can speed this part up. And I think I really do want to do just uh all over meandering in the background of this little piece so i've switched over the thread colors and you can come along as i do a little meandering now i still haven't stitched the stems and i'll do that after the meandering while my free motion foot is still on i want to go ahead and knock this part out and then we'll switch over and i'll do the little stems I just want to stop it here because I know you see it approaching the purple glue. <laughs> That's why I like using a clear glue stick. I have dried it and dried it and dried it, but it's so thick right there that I think it's just going to take like five years for it to completely dry. And hopefully it fades away, especially since I'm going to hang this up in my house. Uh, but I did have a quilt project one time that that stayed forever. So I'm hoping that this disappears, but that's usually why I like a clear glue stick. I have dried it and dried it. Um, normally, I would say do not quilt through wet glue. You're going to see me, for all intents and purposes, this is wet glue. But my suggestion for you at home is not to stitch through wet glue. <laughs> and I'm going to try to go around it, but um, yeah, make sure your glue is dry before you bring it over to the sewing machine. So there we go. The background is all quilted. I'm going to switch over to um, my regular pressing foot and put the brown thread back in and we're going to do a little satin stitch for the stem. Okay, I've put on my open toe foot because I'm thinking you'll be able to see the stem a little bit better. And uh, I'm just going to try out some zigzag stitches. I know that the smaller part of the stem I want a little bit thinner. So let's start there and pick a zigzag stitch. Let me try out some before I give you my settings. Thank you. 
Okay, see that really, really tiny stitch? <laughs> because we're going through batting and backing fabric and our quilt top. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller stitch, kind of really close together. Uh, if I were using this stitch just to stitch this uh, stem on a block that has not been layered like this, just the top, then I would most definitely use some kind of stabilizer underneath. Okay, so the width is 1.2 and the length is 0.4. So it is not very wide at all and really close together. I'm going to do the tiny part of the stems first and then I'm going to do the, we'll change out the settings and do the thicker part. So that was it. Three really tiny stems. <laughs> now let's change this out to a little bit thicker. All right. So yeah, that'll be much thicker than this right here, which we used for the smaller part of the stem. So all I did was change the width, 2.0 on the width, and the length is still 0.4 on my machine. See the difference in those two stems? That looks really nice. All right, let's bring this back over to the pressing board and we'll get a good view of the whole thing. There we go. Isn't that so pretty? All right, we have uh, some jump stitches to take off, right? And I'll just take them off of the top. Just like that. And let me just give this a quick little press. That's got to warm back up, so let me just cut the little <laughs> jump stitches from the back. Which really, all that you see on the back is where the uh, thread cutter ties a little knot, so I had to clean that up. So that's the back of my project so far, right? And um, I'm not bothered by the brown thread being on the back of the project. Usually, like if this were a quilt I was quilting for a client, I would want all of the thread colors to be the same. But um, yeah, that's okay. And there's the front. The purple glue is fading ever so slightly. It's just really taking its sweet time. <laughs> My hope is that it th fades all the way, disappears forever. All right, so I just gave that a quick press and uh, I wanna take my 12 and a half inch ruler and square this up nice and pretty. So let me do that off camera and we'll be right back. So here we go. Here is my squared up little quilt block, right? Uh, we're ready to go ahead and add a binding to this. So you would just bind it as normal. Uh, you could have trimmed away the batting and the top and used the back as your binding, right? But today I wanted to show you uh, how to face your projects. Uh, it's a great way to use up extra scraps of uh, binding that you have left over. And uh, 
yeah, it's a great alternative for doing binding. So let me pull over what I have. <laughs> and when I say scraps, that's what I'm using today, y'all. I have um, a piece of binding that was not quite enough to bind this project. And another piece of binding that was not quite large enough or long enough to bind this project. And we're going to use them both. And it's going to be okay. And then I have four squares of fabric. And basically, you can make these squares any size you want. I've cut mine to three and a half by three and a half inches. Uh, you can make them bigger. Uh, you can make them a little bit smaller. I don't know how much smaller I'd make them on my projects, but three and a half by three and a half is great for this size project, right? And so with your four squares, you're just going to fold them in half, but you're going to match it. And it's going to be hard to tell because I'm using a solid, but, uh, lay the right side facing down and when you fold it in half and make a triangle you're matching up the inside fabric okay so the outside is nice and finished and when you fold it over to a triangle what should be facing out is the right side of your fabric and you're just going to give that a press just like so Just like so. And just like so. <laughs> You're going to go ahead and press all four of them and just make little triangles. Okie doke. So I'm going to have my scraps of binding and my four triangles. We're going to bring over our project with the right side facing up, okay? We're going to bring in our triangles and the folded edge, the longer side of the triangle goes towards the project. So that corner goes just like this. Now you can use binding clips. You can use pins. I prefer to glue baste these in place myself. Uh, that's just me. But yeah, binding clips work really great too. So what I'm going to do is just run a small couple little dots right in that corner. And they don't even have to go the full uh, length of your triangle. We just want to keep that triangle matched up to that edge just like that. And I'm going to do that for all four corners. Dot, 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 dot. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Small little dots. They act like little pins, right? I just won't have binding clips or pins in my way when I go to sew. We're going to match up the corners just like this. And just like that. And now I'm just going to dry that glue with my iron. Now I know it's a little, uh, a little funny because we're doing this to the right side of our project, right? These triangles in your binding is actually going to finish on the back side of your project when we're done. Okay. So now we're going to let that cool off and I'm going to bring in a pair of scissors and now we're just eyeballing this binding, right? Uh, we're going to bring the binding. It doesn't have to go corner to corner. It just has to fall uh, within that triangle and I like it to come in a little bit of ways uh, about like that just like that and I'm cutting it off just little pieces like that now because I'm using scraps I do want to kind of make it a little bit of coordination on the back it doesn't have to be all the same binding but let's make it look like we did this on purpose right so I'm just gonna put that binding 
down there, right? So now I've used up a piece of binding that ordinarily uh, was too small to really do anything except to make one long scrappy binding, right? And I'm going to do the same thing with this binding. Just go ahead and pre-cut it like that. And like that. Ordinarily, uh, I don't usually like those bindings to touch, so let's make this one a little bit smaller. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna glue base these in place too so that they don't shift around when, um, when I'm sewing. It just keeps everything right in place. Okay, we're gonna let this cool off for just a second, but everything is pinned right in place with the glue. So I can bring this right over to the sewing machine. So I've switched back over to a brown thread. Oh, you already know that. I still have the brown thread and from doing the little stem stitch. I am gonna move this over and just put on my regular pressing foot. You might not be able to see <coughs> quite as good. But there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and set up to a quarter inch seam allowance, just like if you were attaching a regular binding. And because we're sewing through a many, many layers, I did increase my stitch length to a 2.4. You may or may not have to do that. And now all we're doing is sewing one box all the way around, no starts and stops. Well, <laughs> You don't have to leave an opening or anything. And there we go. Let's bring this right on over here. Oops, that's the wrong camera. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all the way around, just sewed. Let me cut this little thread. There we go. So at this point, we're just flipping everything over to the other side. Uh, I do like to just trim up my little corners and remove a little bit of that bulkiness right in those corners. And now we're flipping everything over. And just pushing those corners right on out. I like to start working that binding over to the other side and we're going to give this a press here in just a second. And I like to get a little pokey tool and sort of work those corners a little bit. just a little uh, like a chopstick and 
and I'm just poking carefully the corners. Now we're just going to start uh, pressing everything, okay? I like to roll this binding towards the back. There's going to be a little seam on the side that looks just like this, right? I like to, for that just to be centered on the side of the project. So it does take a little bit of work just rolling that seam over and pressing all the way around. So once you have it all rolled over to the other side, I could still poke out my corners. <laughs> uh, once you have it all rolled out to the other side and pressed nice and flat, for those of you who like hand sewing, well, that's a lot better. <laughs> for those of you who like hand sewing, you're just going to take and do a hand sewing whip stitch. And I'm sorry about the colors of the camera, y'all. This yellow really just wants to wash everything out. You're just going to whip stitch all along the edges just to hold down those finished edges, right? You could also take some permanent hem tape and put it just inside uh, the binding right underneath and iron it closed, right? You could do that if you're like me and the thought of hand sewing that binding seems like it would take way too long <laughs> you could use something like that there I think that's better don't you think there we go that corner is still a little odd <laughs> but uh, today I'm just gonna take some permanent Fabri-Tac glue this is clear and it dries really quick and it's waterproof it, it is permanent and uh, just put a little bit right inside these uh, binding strips and secure my binding permanently that way because that seems really fast, right? I'm just right on the back side, lifting up this binding and putting a small amount right there and just pressing it right down in place. Let me see if I can fix the colors of this camera. <laughs> there, I think that's a little bit better. You're gonna definitely hear probably Poppy and the cat. The cat is upset because Orange Cat, which is a wild cat, we call him Orange Cat. Orange Cat has been spotted outside. Ashley is highly upset about it, which upsets the bird. And <laughs> I cannot stop filming to allow them to have their moment of being upset. So right now, everybody in the house is upset. The other day we had uh, the kitchen door, which is our back door, open, but we had the sliding screen door over, right? So we had a nice breeze coming through the house. And all the cats had disappeared. We were all in the, uh, in the, in our den watching TV. And I heard all this growling noise and it sounded like something major was going on. 
So I walked into the kitchen and all three of my cats were sitting at the back door. An orange cat was sitting on the outside looking in. And all three of my cats were highly upset (laughs) that orange cat was there. And ever since, Ashley has not rested at all. He is highly agitated the orange cat exists much less was at our back door looking in. <laughs> See how quick the fabri glue just really holds that fabric right down in place. Now the fabri glue does have a little bit of a smell to it. So if you're sensitive to smells, I'd have a window open or something. But the good news is the glue dries really fast. And so as soon as the glue is dry, the smell just goes away. So I've bonded all four of my binding strips and now the corners are just open. Now these raw edges will fray, but they're underneath of those triangles. But what you could do is go ahead and glue your triangles down too. You could leave them open and put a dowel rod in there and use that as a hanger. (laughs) He's just not going to stop. Uh... Now I know this is a glue that I do not want to get on my iron, period. So I'm just going to cover this with just a pressing cloth. You could let it just dry, air dry, and it really doesn't take that long for it to air dry. But I want it dry so that we can just see this project nice and finished before we end for today. And just a little bit of heat is all it takes to dry this glue. There we go. So that's what the back looks like, right? I think it's cute with the multiple different colors of binding. And this is what the front looks like. So while it doesn't have the uh, the little border that a binding adds, right? A little frame. It is still uh, really super cute. And it's a pretty easy and nice way to finish your small projects, right? This is ready just to be hung up, uh, probably in my kitchen somewhere, or to put on the table, or my side table in the den. Excuse me. So there we go. I hope you uh, get this applique and that you have fun with it. Yes. I'm sorry about all the background noise today, (laughs) y'all. Yeah, so... If you make this, I would love to see it. Go ahead and uh, jump on over to the creative crew and share your pictures with everybody. We'd be excited to see what you've done. I really like the meandering in the background. See that quilting? It had been a while since I had done any little meandering, so that was fun. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hanging out with you next week. Remember, we're doing the joy block. So we're going back to Christmas next week. Yeah, have fun. Maybe you could put this on a t-shirt. Wouldn't that be pretty? These colors and this flannel would look terrific on the back of a jean jacket. (laughs) There's a couple ideas for you. Okay, everybody. It's been a lot of fun hanging out with you today. I look forward to seeing you next Friday. Bye, everybody.